Welcome to Vineyard Church. My name is Andy Mead. I'm glad you're joining us today as we are in our series, The Great Comeback. Now, when we find ourselves in setbacks, we can end up getting ourselves in trouble. There's all kinds of different setbacks. There's financial setbacks, uh, relational setbacks. There's vocational setbacks. There's health setbacks. We can even have spiritual setbacks. But one of the things that's common to all setbacks is when you're there, especially if you're there a long time, you can find yourself getting emotionally depleted where you just don't have any more energy. You're wiped out. You're running on fumes. And we're going to learn about how to identify that and get out of that, which is even more important, from somebody in the Bible. His name is Elijah. If you know anything about Elijah, Quite an amazing guy, did all these miracles. So it might surprise you that he would even have setbacks and be emotionally depleted. But the Bible says Elijah was just like us. Elijah had all of the same challenges, all of the same uh, difficulties that we experience in our lives, particularly when we're in a setback. So there's certainly a lot that we can learn from this guy, Elijah. So we're going to look at that. That's in 1 Kings Chapter 19, that's in the Bible, in the Old Testament. If you want to follow along, we do have the verses that we'll be looking at on the screen today. But before we can get in to 1 Kings chapter 19, the story we're going to look at and learn about, uh, we're, it really kind of sets, starts in the chapter before in 18. You see what happens in chapter 18 is, when we drop into that story, we find that the nation of Israel, and Elijah was an Israelite, he was part of that nation, he looked around and he saw a morally bankrupt nation, just totally a bankrupt. And the leader was a king, Ahab, and his wife, Jezebel. They worshipped this false god, Baal, along with all of these prophets. Uh, they were they worshipped stone idols. They sacrificed children to this, uh, this god, Baal. And, uh, and then anybody who spoke against them, they were killed. So they were very bloodthirsty. And the nation was, uh, like I said, morally bankrupt. And so God calls and uses this guy, uh, his name's Elijah, to bring a revival to this country, to help them uh, get rid of this, this uh, situation they find themselves as a country. So what Elijah does is he calls everybody to a central meeting spot, this a mountain which is basically in the middle of Israel called Mount Carmel. And so they all come into Mount Carmel and they, they ascend there, the whole nation, and he and they have these prophets that uh, the uh, the prophets of Baal. There's about 450 of them, and he separates them from himself. He's all by himself. He goes, "You guys make an altar. We're going to do a contest. You guys build yourself an altar. Put some wood there. Put some meat on it, and then and I'll do the same. And whichever altar burns up with fire miraculously, you can't ignite it yourself. That's the true God. And all the people uh, in the nation, they go, that's a great idea. Let's find out who's the real God. And so that's what happens is the, the, the uh, and, and Elijah says, you guys go first. And so these 450 false prophets of Baal, they start they create their altar, they, they, they wood, and they put in some stakes on there from a cow, and, and then they start chanting, and they start wailing. And it, goes, it starts in the morning, it goes all into the afternoon, and Elijah starts to uh, chide them and say, hey, what's wrong? Is your God not listening? Uh, does he, is he on vacation? Is he, it actually says in the Bible, he says, are you going to the bathroom? And maybe he's going to the bathroom and he can't be bothered right now. And so they're doing everything they can, chant. They go all into the, in, deep into the afternoon, the whole day. So finally, Elijah says, now it's my turn. Now it's my turn. And so then he says, not only uh, does he have wood and his animal sacrifice, but he goes, now pour 12 big buckets of water to waterlog everything to make it even more difficult for it to, uh, to, for it to ignite. And then he starts praying. And that's where we pop in to uh, this chapter 18. It says, at the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah went up to the altar. This is the altar that he made and prayed, Lord, I know 
You're the God of Abraham and Isaac and Israel. Now prove that you are the real God that I am and I am your servant. Show these people, he's talking about to the nation of Israel, that you told me to do this. Lord, answer my prayer so that these people will know that you're God and that they will change their minds. In other words, instead of following this false uh, prophet, these false prophets and these false gods, then the fire from, uh, of the Lord came down and burned, burned it up, not just the sacrifice and all the wood, but also burned up the stones and the ground around the altar and dried up all of the water in the ditch. Well, even all of the water, everything was completely consumed with fire. Well, the people go crazy. They're so fired up. God does this amazing miracle, and they're angry at these false prophets of sacrificing their kids and doing all these things. And so they go and they kill them, uh, these 450 prophets of, of false prophets of Baal. Well, Jezebel hears about it, and she is ticked. It says, King Ahab told his wife Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he ordered the death of all of the false prophets of Baal. So the queen sent this threat to Elijah May my God strike me dead if I don't kill you by this time tomorrow. So now she has this death threat against him and uh, this warrant out. Uh, and, and, and these are the 10 things that we're going to look at that identify when you are emotionally drained. Here he is at the high point at Mount Carmel. Now he goes into his low point. Elijah was afraid and he ran for his life. He left his servant in the town of Beersheba, and he walked for a full day into the desert. So I'm highlighting the different 10 points, and we'll cover them in just a moment. Finally, he came to a broom tree, and he collapsed under the shade. There he prayed that he might die. He said, God, I have had enough. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Exhausted, he fell asleep under the broom tree. Elijah told God, I've always worked hard for you, Lord, but your people have abandoned your covenant, destroyed your palaces of worship, and murdered all your true prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. So here he is in this depleted place in his life. And we see these things I've highlighted in 10 different traits to identify, hey, I'm in emotional depletion. Some of you are in that place. You've been in your setback, and you're, you're going through uh, this emotional burnout. How do you know? Well, let's look at them individually. First, fear gets into your life. You start being afraid of things, being afraid of the future, all kinds of things. It says, Elijah, he was afraid. And that's one of the things that happens that we're, we're just kind of, we can't endure as much. We're kind of on edge it's more difficult to, I find myself running away. We're run, that's what Elijah did. He ran away. It says Elijah ran for his life. Let me ask you, what are you running from? Often when we start running from things we normally would face, it's an indication that we're emotionally drained. I start backing out of my relationships. Elijah did that. He had a good relationship with his servant, but he left his servant in the town of Beersheba, somebody he had known for a long time, and he just leaves him. Again, let me ask you, what relationship are you backing out of that, you're, that could be a sign that you're just emotionally uh, on fumes? And that's really the issue. I make foolish decisions impulsively. Another sign of emotional burnout. He walked for a full day into the desert. That's not too smart. That's a foolish decision. He did it impulsively. He has no plan. He's going out into the desert. That's, he's going the wrong direction. He has no water. Uh, that's, a, that's not a good decision. And he ends up collapsing. He says, I put myself, we end up putting ourselves past our physical limits. That's certainly what Elijah did. He collapsed under some shade. He just goes out into the desert. Again, no water, no plan. And he, and he just goes until he just physically collapses. He has nothing else to give. Six, I work, my work starts to feel pointless. Often when we are challenged at work, it's not the physical part, it's the emotional part, but it affects us at our work. It affects it. We start to feel like our work doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. Elijah said, I've worked hard, 
But then he goes on and he says, but it didn't really change anything. The nation hasn't changed. They're still doing, you know, uh, idol worship and, and all these things. He looks around, he goes, nothing's really changed. He's in this place of depletion. And this often happens when we feel like it's our responsibility uh, to uphold everything around us. Things that are really outside of our control. We kind of have this atlas complex and then we start getting on ourselves. Well, I should be doing better. I should be upholding. These things shouldn't be falling. And we're trying to spin too many plates. And then they begin to fall on us. I complain that I want to quit. That's often an indication that we're emotionally on the edge. Or maybe just completely uh, burn out. Uh, this is what Elijah says. He goes, God, I've had enough. I'm done. I'm throwing in the towel. I don't have any more to give. Or I feel isolated and attacked. And that's often a perception more than it is reality. That I feel that I'm isolated, that nobody's supporting me, nobody's with me, and that people are attacking me. He says, I'm the only one left, and they're trying to kill me. So he says, he goes, hey, I'm being attacked. Uh, you know, uh, she wants to kill me. Well, if Jezebel really wanted to kill her, uh, kill him, he wouldn't have sent... Uh, a messenger saying that he wanted to, to, to die, but he would have just sent an assassin to kill him. But in his perception, he's thinking, hey, I'm, uh, I'm in this place where I, uh, uh, I feel like I'm being attacked. I'm the only one left. In fact, God helps him with his perception. He says, actually, Elijah, there are 7,000 other faithful souls in Israel who have not bowed down to their knees to the false gods of Baal. Now, Jezebel did kill all the other prophets, but he says, hey, there's still 7,000 people that love me and are following me. In other words, it's, it's not all on your shoulders. You don't have to be Atlas. Uh, you don't have to feel uh, you know, like uh, you're attacked and isolated. I compare myself to others. That's one of the things that we tend to do when we, when we find ourselves in an emotional burnout. For I'm no better than my ancestors, he says. And when we start comparing ourselves to others, we end up getting depressed and despondent. And we become our own self-critic. We start talking to ourselves and, 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 and complaining about our own performance. And we just start to feel bad about ourselves. And then number 10, I think death might bring relief. This is what Elijah was th said. He goes, you know what? He goes, he, he prayed. He goes, you know what? I might as well just, just die. Just take my life. And that often is uh, th when we start to feel like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm no good here. I'm not doing anyone any favors by being alive. Let me just say that. That's not true, that God cares about you, that there's people that care about you. Certainly our church does. I care about you. If that's, if that's crossed your mind, you're thinking, hey, I might as well just take my life. Don't, if that's what your thoughts are, I'm, I want to implore you, please don't. I mean, that's a permanent solution to really a temporary thing you're going through. And there's people that want to support you and encourage you. These are all, though, all 10 are natural things. Elijah was a person just like us, struggled with those things. What do we do when we're in emotional burnout, when we're in that place? How do we get out of that? Well, we see that in Elijah's life. And that's actually uh, the, what I really want to talk to you about is this, what, what happens. First, God makes him rest. God, God helps me to rest. Sometimes we're not smart enough to rest ourselves. And so I love this out of this most famous psalm in all of the Bible. It says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. God says he restores our soul. How does he do it? By having us rest. Sometimes God has to kind of put in an enforced rest for us. We, something happens where we, we, you know, we, we just can't, we can't go on. And it, it causes us to rest. Here's what I want you to know. You cannot be spiritually and emotionally strong while you're physically fatigued and depleted. When you're, when you're all uh, gone physically, how do you, I mean, that's going to affect your emotional demeanor. It's going to affect your spiritual life. It certainly did for Elijah. It says, And Elijah lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. So there he is. He's sleeping, and then God's instructing him to eat. He looked around and saw some bread uh, baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So God actually provides him with a box of donuts and some water or whatever it is, some kind of baked goods. So he ate and drank 
and laid down again. So here he is, he's sleeping again. He went back to sleep. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, get up and eat. So here he's concerned about his physical well-being. In other words, getting sleep, eating uh, f- something, uh, for there is a long journey ahead of you. And then because he did that, his strength was revived. For some, of, for some people, the most spiritual thing you can do is take a nap, just getting some rest. Uh, whether God makes you to do it or you just do it on your own, God wants his loved ones to get their proper rest. We all need physical rest. It uh, impacts us emotionally. Vince Lombardi used to say, fatigue makes cowards of us all. In other words, we, can only, we can't really go the distance. We can only do so much if we are physically exhausted and depleted. And so uh, if, you wanna, if you're in an emotional burnout, you're running on fumes, you don't feel like you have the wherewithal emotionally to move forward, the first thing to do is get some rest. The second thing is God encourages me to release my frustrations. That stuff that's bottled up, that stuff that's, that's, that's going on, the emotional uh, concerns, to share that, to open up. Elijah certainly did that. You know, Elijah ends up uh, sharing those things we just looked at, talking about the frustrations in his life. Then he goes to uh, Mount Sinai where Moses got the Ten Commandments, said Elijah traveled to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. There he came to a cave. So here he's at this mountain. He's in a cave. And then God starts doing this, this amazing supernatural things with the wind and, 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 and the earth. Says, but the Lord said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Then Elijah said, so now whenever God uh, asks a question, he always knows the answer. And what he's wanting Elijah to do is to open up, to express. He goes, what's going on? What's happening? And Elijah certainly expresses some emotions that put him in the hole that he's in, that he's in this, uh, this place of burnout. He's struggling with fear, he says, with anger, with resentment, with loneliness, with depression, with worry. These are the things that we experience. And if we're not willing to really open up and discuss it and, and, and express it to the Lord, those things end up just continuing to put us in a, an emotional hole. We're just emotionally depleted. And so by bringing them to, the, to God, it helps to exchange all of our frustrations, our emotionally, emotional frustrations for his love. The Bible says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Receiving the fact that God cares for you, that he loves you, he's, he knows what you're going through. And then that's part of our process, getting the rest, expressing the frustrations we're in. And then also uh, remembering that God wants us, remembering God cares for us, and then refocusing on him. This is certainly what Elijah did. The Lord said to Elijah, go stand at the front of the mountain. So here he's in this cave. He goes, come outside the cave. He goes, I'm going to pass you by. Then a very strong wind blew past. The Lord was not in the wind. Then there was an earthquake. Now the Lord's causing these things, but he's not in them. There was not, but he's not in the earthquake. Then there's wildfire, uh, but the Lord was not in the fire. But then there was quiet, gentle sound. When Elijah heard it, he covered his face with his coat and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And the voice said to him, Elijah, why are you still here? Again, you know, ask the question. He's saying, what's, what's going on here? Well, he does this uh, extravagant uh, uh, thing that all with, with uh, the wind and the way, uh, the wind and the earth and the earthquake. And he's, what he's saying is he's, uh, he's got power. And he's got Elijah. He's got him under his, you know, he's, he can control the situation. In other words, Elijah doesn't have to worry about this one lady who has been threatening him. You know, Jezebel saying that she's going to kill him. He's going, hey, look at all of the power. I've got, I can take care of you. I can take care of you. And knowing that uh, gives Elijah peace. Hey, God's got me. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna watch over me. There's another prophet I want to tell you about. His name was Jer- Jeremiah. Jeremiah was in an emotional depleted place. He was emotionally uh, bankrupt. And he goes to God. He writes this lament. It's called Lamentations, which means complaining. And he goes to God and he's expressing his frustrations. And he says this. He goes, just thinking of my troubles and wanderings. Wanderings, that means he just feels lost. And when you're emotionally depleted, 
When, you're, when, when you don't have it in you emotionally, that's how you feel. Like you, you don't even know the next step, where you're going. You feel lost. You, you have, you're in your wanderings. Your trouble's in your wanderings. Fills me with sadness and bitterness. Maybe you can relate to that. Sadness and bitterness is all I ever think about, and I am depressed. So here he is. He's emotionally, he's wiped out. He doesn't have it. He's, he, he's not even running on fumes. I mean, he's wiped out. And he says, but then I remember something that fills me with hope. And this is the key. He goes, this is how he steps out of it. And this is what he says. He goes, the Lord's steadfast love never ends. Now notice this, steadfast love. His unfailing mercy keeps me from being wiped out. Because of his great faithfulness, each new day is always kind to me. So deep in my heart, I say, I say to myself, the Lord is all that I need. He is my real hope. Now, when we are depressed, so many of us, we want to try to fix it by maybe eating chocolate or something sweet. I mean, we're looking for some kind of pick-me-up physically. The problem with you know, pies, cookies, chocolate. Often we, we, we get a high from that, but then it turns into a crash. Now, God has sugar for us uh, when we're depressed, when we're in an emotional pit, but it's one that doesn't crash, and it's found in this verse. If you take sugar, the word sugar, and break it up into those five letters, you see them right here. The S is steadfast love. That's what we need when we're depressed. We need God's unfailing mercy. We need his great faithfulness. We need always, remember, he's always kind, and he's our real hope. That's the sugar that we need. That's God's antidote when you find yourself emotionally burnt out or headed down that direction. You go to God's sugar. God's sugar is his love, his mercy, his faithfulness, his kindness, and his hope. I want to close with this last verse. It's a it's, it's new direction, a new assignment God gives Elijah. God says to Elijah, go back the way you came to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint. Now what that word means, anoint, is appoint. Appoint somebody to help you. Uh, deputize somebody. And he gives him three names, Haziel, Jehu, and Elijah. And from that point forward, Elijah is never He's never alone. He always has companionship helping him out. And he gives him a new assignment. He says, I'm not done with you. I, and we've got to be careful when we find ourselves falling like Elijah did from a mountaintop into this desert place, into a place where he's in this emotional hole. Sometimes we just feel like maybe it's all over. But God wants to say to you, he's not done with you. He has a new assignment for you. He has not given up on you. And so you don't give up on yourself. You identify it. If you have these 10 things or any of them, you go, hey, I am in an emotional, difficult place. And then you start to apply the things that God says. These are the things that you need to do. Some of you, you need, you need rest. Maybe you need to go to the doctor and get some help with something physical and just you know, run some tests, make sure you're, you're okay. Maybe you need some, some kind of medication to help with that, but you, you take care of your physical body. That's important. Then you share your frustrations. Share them with God. Share them with a small group. That's the power uh, of a small group. We have 50 people in eight different small groups that are online. That certainly is a way where you can be part of that. Join one of our small groups, and you can start to pray for other people. They can pray for you. Encourage other people. They can encourage you. Uh, you don't want to fall into the place where you feel isolated like Elijah did. And then you remember and you refocus on God, specifically on sugar, on those five things that you, you go, God, I, I, I want you in my life, and I want to refocus on you. So let's do that right now in prayer. If you would, wherever you're at, you're watching this online, just kind of, would you bow your hearts or your head, your whatever, just kind of get in a posture of prayer, and let's just close this, as this Bible uh, reading out, just committing that to prayer. Would you do that with me? Father, we just come to you right now in Jesus' name, Lord, and we pray, I pray, Father, for anyone who is struggling with emotional burnout. Lord, let your love just wash over them, that they would experience your steadfast love, your unfailing mercy over anything that they've done uh, that they regret. 
that they that that they're that they're uh, a letting they're letting past decisions, past choices drain their emotional energy. Give them, Lord, your mercy, your your unfailing mercy, and Lord, we know we can stand on your great faithfulness while all of the world can be in chaos. We know that you are faithful, that you're always kind, that you have our best interest in mind, and that you are our hope. You're the real hope that we all stand on. If you've never asked Christ into your life, do that right now. Would you just say, God, today, I want to follow you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, for me. Lord, put your Holy Spirit in me. Help me to live the life that you have for me. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my sin. Help me, Lord, live out this life in the very best possible way. Would you say, God, help me? In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I believe God helps those who call out for them. He certainly has done that for me. I know uh, thousands and thousands of people over the years who, that's, that's where it all started for them. They just cried out to God, said, God, help me. And that began a domino effect of God moving in their lives. And I believe that happened uh, as you prayed. And you said, God, today I need your help. I'd love you to tell me about the decision where you said yes to God. Just say no, God, and text it to 704-5504. Also, if you're on Vineyard Live, you can let us know uh, there uh, as uh, say, hey, I've prayed to receive Christ. I prayed to follow God. We also want to know about anything we can pray for you about. Uh, of course, you can let us know in any kind of private messaging on, our pl- on any of our social media platforms. You can also use the same number and just put in pray and let us know how we can pray for you. If you'd like to support what uh, through finances, what uh, God is doing here through Vineyard Church, we'd love to have you come along and uh, join us as we uh, share the good news and the power uh, that God has for people in today's life. Uh, not just thousands of years ago, but today, the living God loves people and wants to give them hope. And here's uh, some ways that you can do that. Probably the easiest is just to text 45777 and then type in VCC and, uh, and then whatever you want to give to invest in God's work. We'd love to partner with you in that. And so uh, thank you for joining us uh, in this series, The Great Comeback. Can't wait to see you uh, next week. See you next week.